YouTube, what is up? So, today we're going to be looking at Silver Sable and Marvel's Night Thrasher. Um, it didn't dawn on me until I started looking into Silver Sable and was, you know, trying to do some research on her history that I recalled we were supposed to get a Silver Sable and Black Cat movie. And uh, initially, Sony placed holders on uh, two release dates back when Venom was announced. And they were showing two uh, movies that were scheduled for release in October of 2018. However, we know we got one, and that was Venom. But they were uh, in talks about a Silver Sable and Black Cat movie. Now, we know that that didn't come out in 2018. So I'm thinking maybe October 2019, we uh, may be getting this um, Silver Sable and Black Cat movie. And, you know, maybe what I should have done was open these two together. However, it is what it is, and, you know, I kind of overlooked that. But um, I say that we still may end up getting the movie um, simply because I took a look at uh, who they had scheduled uh, to direct the film. And she's a lady by the name of uh, Gina Prince Blythewood. And uh, she worked on uh, several other films. And uh, I can't say I'm a huge fan of hers. But there were, I mean, who knew what she directed? And, you know, as I went back and looked, I found a few films that I was familiar with. And also, uh, Christopher Yost is going to be working with this movie in some capacity. I don't know if as a writer, because I believe Miss. Blythewood is the um, director. So, you know, maybe with the release of that film, you know, these uh, two figs here, you know, maybe their demand may go up in some ways. Um, so, actually, let's uh, move her to the side and get into this Silver Sable figure, which is a nice figure. Um, if you uh, looked at the review I did on, that would have been uh, Puma and Black Cat. Uh, you would have heard me talk about some issues with this figure. And one uh, is going to be the uh, marbling in her chest area and the little silver paint that she has on her. Um you might want to take a close look at that and pay close attention to make sure you get something that you like. Don't just grab this figure and go. Um, I don't suggest ordering her online, but if that's the only way you can get her, because I know a lot of people are not going to really care. They're just going to want the uh, build a figure piece for the kingpin and then, you know, call it a day. But, you know, if you do care, this is one that you would want to pick up in person. Okay. Um, as far as Silver Sable, we know she's a, you know, I don't know if you want to call her anti-hero, but she plays, you know, both sides. She's even teamed up with, you know, guys like the Sandman. She hired the Sandman to work with her. Uh, she's worked with Paladin. Um, she's the leader of the Wild Pack. Um, her first appearance was in June of 1985 in Spider-Man. Uh, she was created by Tom DeFalco and Ron Frentz. Now, interesting thing. So was Night Thrasher. Um, so I, I don't know. Like The more I look into these characters in this set, the more of a theme I feel. You got these two. You got uh, even uh, Black Cat. These were two uh, characters that you would have found in uh, The Amazing Spider-Man at some point. And then you had the other two of the uh, Red Goblin and the Symbiote 2 Spider-Man who tied in to the uh, very last issues of the comic book run. Uh, 
of Amazing Spider-Man. And now they're restarting that all over again. Uh, we talked about that already. No need to get into that. Um, but uh, yeah, back to Silver Sable. She was uh, a member of the Intruders, Outlaws, and Heroes for Hire. Um, skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, firearms, knives, you know. Um, what else can we say about her? Um, it's pretty much it. Uh, you know, she has off and on relationships with Peter Parker, as does every single girl in the uh, Spider Universe. So, all right. Now, here's Night Thrasher. Now, like I mentioned, uh, he was created by Tom DeFalco and Ron Frentz. Uh His first appearance was in Thor of, like, 89. Uh, he's... Uh, leader and founder of the new warriors uh taylor foundation which does like cancer research and stuff like that and uh, the folding circle uh he's an inventor acrobat skilled martial artist uh you know and uh hand-to-hand -hand combat and what's interesting is uh, he's like immune to telepathy so if you're a telepath you have no effect on him that's you know kind of kind of weird but uh we know that uh as far as his team is concerned uh he uh had a, a group with a depowered nova which was uh richard Ryder, firestar uh justice or marvel boy speedball and Named Marita. Now, this team was the called the New Warriors, right? And and there was uh, a certain chain of events where uh, they were chasing down some bad guys. Um, let me think who they were. I want to say, wow, Nitro. There you go. Okay, so they're they're chasing down these group of. Uh, bad guys and uh namorita corners uh or she's chasing down nitro and she like grabs him by his back of his head and throws him up against a car or something and uh she sets him off and if you don't know about the character nitro he's like he can just blow up at any point like he can blow literally blow himself up and destroy everything in the area and uh, so she grabs him, slams his face into a vehicle and a bus or something, and he blows up, killing Namorita uh, and uh, Night Thrasher. So this was actually during the time of, um, how could I say this, when they were... Uh, when they were uh, talking about the uh, Mutant Registration Act or whatever that's called. Jesus Christ, how come I can't think of the name of that? The Superhuman Registration Act. So this was actually uh, one of the first incidents that uh, led to this uh, act and the start of the Civil War within Marvel. And um, and it, it's, it's weird because... Uh, you know, he, he ends up getting killed, but then in some other universes, he's he's around. But, you know, it, it's very strange. Um, at one point, he adopted a character named Rage, which is uh, an actual cool character. He looks similar to him without a shirt, like more muscular, taller, bigger. And he has like a yellow mask, yellow and black mask. So... I'm calling it right now. We need that figure. We need a rage. We also need more of the uh, of the uh, characters from his group. And I mean, I don't know how people would feel feel about like name Aretha, but and we do have an, uh, a Nova. I, although I don't have them out on the table right now, uh, but Firestar and Speedball were another two that. Uh, 
I would love to have from the uh, new warriors. Um, so yeah, that's enough babbling. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, crack these open. So we have him unpackaged. Well, him, Night Thrasher, we got him unpackaged. Um, it's, it's a cool fig. The colors are nice. Um, but a lot of reuses all over this fig. Like, right off the bat, like that, I kind of thought this was new, and then I'm like, okay, is this still considered new when these two share this belt? I don't recall seeing it anywhere else. I could be wrong. Um, but for the most part, we know that this is going to be the uh, Unidon uh, Taskmaster body. And we're going to go ahead and at some point pull him out. But there's like this gloss metal, black looking uh, look. And then dull. And then you have the gloss again. Um, I think this figure would have been cool with some uh, fisted hands. I mean, we know he's a fighter. So why not give us some fisted hands? Um... Still not too bad though. I mean, it's it's a character that I really liked and I really care for. So to me, it's cool. Like there's a couple of other different versions of him, and uh, the suit looks a little different. And he also has a half brother uh, that was called. He was a villain. Uh, his name was Bandit, uh, Daniel uh, Taylor, which, when he died, took over as Night Thrasher. And, uh, but that's another story. I'm not going to bore you with any more of these comic book stories, but we do get this uh, flimsy staff. I, I honestly, God, just hope they just do away with this and maybe come up with something a little bit more, you know, stiff. But, I mean... I think they got a bang for, uh, they got their money's worth out of this one. That's what I was trying to say. Um, skateboard's kind of cool. It has some texture. Uh, wheels do turn. Um, maybe a peg on there would have been nice. I don't know if that's asking too much. And then he has this uh, piece that plugs into his back. Where, let's see if we can do this. You can... I guess slide these in. And uh, slide the skateboard in. Is that how it goes? Yeah. And then that would go straight into his back. There you have it. So overall, I mean, not a bad figure. You go ahead and whip out that uh, Taskmaster for you guys. Be back in just a second. All right, so here we have uh, Taskmaster. So it looks like from uh, the knees down is the same. And this part is different. Um, the arms are the same, but, uh, here from the, uh, wrist up different, maybe even the hands look the same. Wow. Uh, this guy's a little bit dusty, but, uh, yeah, so we got a few reused parts, elbow pad. Let's see. Yeah, that's the same. But although I don't I don't mind it because you can't really tell. I mean, this being all black and this having, you know, some paint, silver, you know, it's. I mean, even standing by side by side, I mean, you would have to really look at it for you to tell that, uh, you know, they're the pretty much the same, but with subtle differences. So uh, Night Thrasher did come with the uh, left leg. To uh, Kingpin, which we 
have almost done. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else to talk about that guy. But uh, here is the package. There's a read-up. You have a picture of Night Thrasher there. Um, let's get that UPC for you guys. And there you have it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Silver Sable. So right off the bat, I got to tell you, this is uh, actually a good-looking figure. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty pleasing to the eyes. Um, again, I can't say I'm a huge fan of uh, Silver Sable. Sorry about that. Just pulling out her guns. Um, she does come with these two guns that we've seen before. Can't say when is the first time we've seen them. Wait a minute. Why does this look different? Yeah, I think they're the same that, that we got with Domino. I'm almost 100% sure. Um, and she came with the left arm. Nothing special here, although it does have that really cool looking ring on it. Let's see. It looks really dull, but. Yeah, it's not a bad look. Um, so this is what I was talking about as far as uh, she's concerned. I don't know if you can see the uh, mobilization here. And then uh, sometimes it even runs in the center of the chest, which when they paint the silver on makes it look really, really terrible. But yeah, overall, it's a good looking figure. It kind of has that, that, uh, hmm. Vibe of uh, the body from here down. And I, maybe that's on just most female figures. But it kind of feels like a uh, rogue. And maybe that is just a standard female buck. You know, I, I really don't know. I really don't play or pay close attention to uh, a lot of the female characters, more so the males. Female characters are like whatever. I mean, pretty standard. So, you know, it's not a lot of... I, I mean, I'm pretty sure we can go back and look at everything and find... All this somewhere, even even the belt, the holsters, which are pretty cool though. Actually, that might be a little different. You know what? We're gonna have to whip out Domino for this one, just to see. Um, I don't want this video to get too long, but you know, we got to do what we got to do to figure out what Hasbro's doing to us. But you know, still don't mind. Whatever they put out, I don't really pick it up. Let's see if we can get her to stand. So, and in the meantime, I'm going to go grab that uh, domino figure. So as I was saying, let me go ahead and put these headphones back on. So as I was saying, yeah, the uh, her accessories are pretty much the same as dominoes. Let's go ahead and move this back. Show you guys the UPC in a second. But yeah, the same guns. And this holster is the same, which doesn't holster anything, although this belt is different. Um, And I, I did mention that I felt like she shared Rogue's body. Um, and that's a negative. Rogue's a lot thicker than she is. Yeah, that's a negative. So... Yeah, that's not it. And, you know, her articulation is too good to be that uh, Jean Grey Phoenix that they gave us, that, the green one. And I was kind of looking here to see maybe if these were the same. And they're not. I don't actually recognize this body. Um, I can't say it's something new, though. But, uh, yeah. 
Um, that's gonna do it. I'm gonna wrap this up before we get too far. So, why do I always show you guys the UPC upside down? That ain't gonna help nobody. So, there's the UPC. Let's see if we can get that to focus. UPC, uh, box art, and let's just do a quick read up on this. Yep. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget we're going to be doing that uh, giveaway for the Red Goblin and when we show this video. And also, I got to do a video on the Six-Arm Spider-Man. So, Six-Arm Spider-Man and Kingpin in one video and giveaway in one video. Um, if you guys are interested in the giveaway, go back and uh, look at the uh, review video of... Red Goblin and the uh, symbiote Spider-Man. That feels like it's going to fall. And also, I uh, just happened to pick up this entire wave. So that's going to be coming soon. I know a lot of people have uh, done reviews, but we're going to try to do a lot of swap outs and comparisons because we got... Civil War, and this is the original Civil War. We have the Vibranium Black Panther, and this is the uh, other Black Panther we got from the Black Panther 1 wave. And uh, we're going to try to do a bunch of swap outs with her and, you know, see what we come up with. But that's neither here nor there. And I'm still thinking about doing that Throwback Thursday video. Excuse me. That's down, fell down. And uh, I got to come up with something for that. So got a lot on my plate right now. So you guys take care and uh, subscribe.